Today I'll be paying tribute to the person that got me into all this mess. That's right, folks, my origin story, Billy. Well, kind of, kind of my origin story. Um, I started out in this hobby back in the sort of mid-90s. I was a kid at the time. It was probably, I guess, around 92, 93 when I first started to actually own some miniatures of my own. But prior to that, my brothers both collected Warhammer 40k. My eldest brother in particular was a huge fan of the White Scars, and he had an absolute buckload of the RTB-01 Space Marines painted as White Scars. So the first time I ever saw a Space Marine, it was a White Scar. Now obviously we're getting ready for Indomitus right now. I'm trying to go through a few Space Marine color schemes to show you my approach to them, maybe give you some ideas, some inspiration. And so, it kind of made sense to me to do this today. We're gonna to look at White Scars my way in preparation for Indomitus. Join me in the down cam. Okay, kicking things off, we're gonna get some Celestra Grey and we're gonna be airbrushing, so uh, we'll be thinning this really, really far back. And we're just doing that kind of, you know, top downy sort of picking out all of the, the rays. Everything but the deepest recesses essentially wants to be Celestra Grey. We're going for white here. We want this to read as white at a glance, but we still want some deep shadow in there. We, you know, we want good, strong, solid contrast. And, and one of the things that you'll, you'll struggle with with white sometimes is getting that good, strong, solid contrast. So we're starting with these greys, just flipping around and building up and making it look pretty. Out of that, we're going to come into Corax White. This is our main armor color now. We want this to be just off-white so that we can still highlight with pure white. So Corax White is a good uh, a good option for that. And again, we're just going to... My airbrush was playing up a little bit here. You see those little spots that it's spattering. I needed to clean the tip, basically. Didn't end up causing any problems in the workup, but it is something to watch out for. Airbrushes do do that sometimes. I knew I was spraying over it, so it didn't matter here. And now some Storm Vermin Fur. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite paints. I really, really like working with it. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna thin it right back to a nice transparent glaze. Test it here on the back of my hand. It's a good way to just check if your paint's transparent enough. And we're gonna panel line with this. I don't normally go for panel lining, or if I do, I usually recommend uh, an oil wash. You could absolutely do an oil wash here, but I wanted to Offer, you know, something that was a little bit more friendly to everyone. You've seen me do a lot of oil washes for my panel shading. Um, I, you know, need to be able to show people that you can do it with acrylic as well. You've just got to be more careful because you have to clean all your surface staining by actually painting it back out. Whereas with an oil wash, you don't have to do that. So we're just going to go around the mini now and do that. And then we'll start blacking in. And, and again, you know, it's pretty obvious what areas you need to black in. Anything that's gonna be metallic silver wants to be black. Anything that's gonna be black wants to be black. So we'll start off in this really annoying little area between the fingers here. I like to do the, the irritated areas first, uh, just so that if I do run out of patience, I'm only left with sort of big blocky simple areas to do. We'll start off with this annoying soft palm of the hand area. And uh, we're gonna speed up the footage. We're gonna start to whip around it. Get the rest of that all blocked in now. The entire chainsaw, the gun, parts of the backpack, the soft panels on the armor, that kind of thing, you know, the areas. And then as I said before, we're just gonna fix any places where we've stained the white armor. Um, so this is just using that Corax white, just picking out any spots where I'd either made a mistake on the panel lining or made a mistake on the blacking in. Just touching it back in with that Corax white. This is why it's really useful to spray with colours that you're also going to brush with. Now into some Mephiston red. This is going to be our first of what you may consider to be tricky parts. We're going to start to look at some free-handed shapes. Uh, I think this was either second or third company's markings that I chose for this. And uh, just went through this nice neat slash down the leg. So keeping the brush as close to 90 degrees as I can, keeping the paint as thin as I can. You'll have seen this in my freehand tutorial. If you haven't, make sure you check that out. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. 
get your outlines in looking as neat as possible first, and then fill them in, make any corrections that you need to make. Very, very straightforward. There's a few more areas of red on the miniature as well, so we will uh, skip forward shortly and get all of that done. That's all the reds blocked in. So I did a little tactical arrow on the shoulder pad. Assault intercessors are a troops choice, so I assumed they'd have a tactical arrow, not a close support cross, but I, I don't really know, if I'm honest. We'll grab some known oil next. I've been using this a couple of times in this workup, but the uh, the first time we use it is is just to do a bit of shading on this red. So we're going to sort of panel line the red with it. And I'm actually going to use it like I would use a glaze as well, just to sort of create a little fade on the underside of some of these shapes. Um, I do it on the on the arrow, on the little ball thing on the side of the foot there. Just build up a few layers of it, just to uh, create a little bit of a, a shadow there. But essentially, most of this is just panel line, and it's, it's stuff that you've sort of already seen elsewhere on the miniature. I hit the chest eagle there, and various different areas. And then we'll retouch the reds after we've done that. So just picking out, not necessarily the raised areas, but the flat areas, you know, the things, the places where we don't want shadow. Just picking those back out with Mephiston Red. Glazed a little bit upwards there just to clean up that transition on the, on the fade that I did there. Now some Rhinox Hide. This is where we're going to start having some fun. Uh, first of all, just a very simple bit with this. Um, we're just going to block in these pouches quickly. Uh, this one has a gun holster on him. It, it actually has a gun in it because obviously I've converted this from a normal intercessor. On the Assault Intercessors, I assume if they have gun pouches, they're going to be empty. But... Just quickly whip through those, get them all blocked in and looking pretty. A couple of coats of Rhinox usually, just to get it nice and solid. I'll just use a hairdryer to cheat if I don't want to wait for the drying time. And now both Squig Orange and Iron Rack Skin, and these are just going to be mixed progressively into that Rhinox hide. So um, first of all I'm going to use them just to dot in this purity seal here. So we've got the orange for the wax. I know this seems a bit weird to use orange, but I didn't want to use red because there's already red there, and I'm going to shade this really dark anyway. Iron rack skin for the parchment. Now we've got some slightly more thinned down orange, just to do a few highlights on the red. Again, just picking out some edge highlights. This is really just to sort of create a sense of separation. Um, I misplaced that first one a little bit there, but I do, I go back and correct it later in the workup. We're just really using these edge highlights just to kind of make a bit of a, bit of a pop here and there to, um, to make sure that, you know, the, the free-handed parts look like they're kind of lit in situ with the rest of the miniature. There we go, so that's how we're looking after all of that. I did also just glaze a bit of Rhinox hide onto the skin there. I wanted to do a dark skin tone here um, as a starting point, but we'll, we'll get onto that later. Uh, I've just mixed some Iron Rack skin into my Squid Orange now, uh, just to do a second highlight quickly. That's all just continuing on from the highlight that I've already put in, just being a bit smaller with it. Go. That's where we're at now. Now some uh, art white from Scale 75 Artist Acrylics, and this is just to start highlighting some of those white armor panels. Um, I'm being quite dotty with this because I'm going to be doing a lot of battle damage on it, so I don't really want like really clean, smooth highlights everywhere. I'm just kind of touring around the miniature and. Put the odd sort of slash and dash in here and there and 
just kind of dotted some white on some of the edges that I wanted to, to bring up. It's very subtle. Now, Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. As I said, I glazed some of that Rhinox hide onto the skin to start out with to give it a good dark base. You don't have to do that, but it's a really nice way to start when you're going to be using these two colours. I do apologise for focus here, but basically what I'm doing now is uh, I've got the Bugman's Glow, first of all, really, really thin down, and I'm just dragging it down in the direction that I want it to lie. I will pull this back in focus shortly. It won't stay blurry forever. But um, basically just pulling it in the direction that I want the light to travel. So where I want the, the, the light to be brightest is where I end my stroke, and where I want the highlight to begin is where I start my stroke. Um, first of all, we, we end up covering most of the area with this Bugman's Glow, so that Rhinox hide underneath just kind of acts as a shade. But once we've built it up through the Cadian Flesh Tone, and even with a little bit of bone and stuff, we end up with a lovely looking face. Again, I have got a face painting tutorial if you need it. Right, now into Rhinox hide and Mars Orange. That was, uh, that was the leather highlights. I made a mistake earlier thinking that I used Squig Orange for it, but it was Mars Orange because we need a brighter orange for that brown. And we're just going to progressively mix more and more Mars Orange into our Rhinox hide and just do very dashy, very scruffy looking highlights to get this really kind of chipped, worn leather. And again, I do add a bit of Iron Rack skin at the end just for those really bright parts. Some dark aluminium now for the metals. Quick tour round, just filling in metal areas. This is really, really simple. I can, uh, I can probably safely assume that you know how to fill in silvers. I can't recommend this dark aluminium enough though, it really is a fantastic metallic paint for doing lots of blocking and stuff. There you go, that's how that's going to look once you've blocked it all in. And then we're just going to grab that Nuln Oil again, good old faithful Nuln Oil, shade all those metallics. How we look with shaded metallics. This is some storm vermin fur here just to highlight the black pouches and all the other black areas as well. So I start off with really thin storm vermin fur on its own and I just uh, tore around those black areas get them all filled in nice and quickly. If you're a bit scruffy with your edge highlights, I've said this before, you can paint back up to them with whatever the previous colour was. So I kind of tend to chuck my edge highlights in fairly quick, fairly fast and dirty. Uh, stepping up to Celestra Grey here to do some more edge highlighting. You can see I'm just sort of targeting corners and really, really fine edges and stuff like that. Um, and then yeah, where they're a bit fat, we can then... I've got a black glaze on the brush now. I'm using it to glaze back the hair, but what I'll also do is use it just to make those uh, highlight lines look a bit slimmer as well. You can see I'm starting to tickle some of those highlight lines now with this black glaze. And it just uh, slims them off a little bit, but it sort of fades them back instead of making them disappear. So it looks like a progressive blend going into them. It's just black paint with loads of water in it. Very straightforward. We're gonna do some lovely silver scratches on the sides of this chainsaw now, make it look like it's been chopping up a few folk. Again, that's just my, my silver paint on the brush and just lots of really jaggedy, irregular brush movements. Sticking as much as you can to the very tip of the brush just to keep it looking nice. Okay, there's a little update for you on where we're at. We're looking pretty good now. We're starting to get towards what looks like a finished marine. And if you wanted the armor clean, this would probably be where you'd stop. But we don't! So we're going to first of all start roughing up our freehand with uh, some Corax White. So that's our, that's our first mission, is just to chip into this freehand and make it look like it's been scuffed and scratched. The idea being that the red paint on the armour would be on top of the white paint on the armour. So we can start to scuff away a few layers and sort of show white paint creeping through. And it just gives us this really nice effect that he's been in awes of it, you know, he's, he's been a bit rough and tumble and as a result, the paint job on his arm has got a little bit scratched up here and there. There we 
go, and then into some Rhinox hide to start chipping up the rest of the armor. And here I'm doing a combination of dots and slashes. Uh, and it's really good to keep a nice mix of this. You know, you don't want any, too much of any one thing because it's gonna it's gonna look uniform if you do that. And you know, for battle damage, you want it to look as random as possible. So we just go around with a bunch of uh, Rhinox hide, and then we grab some pure white and just highlight the undersides of some of those scratches. And the idea here is just to make them look deeper by drawing a little edge highlight to them. I'm gonna grab some Seraphim sepia now just to uh, wash the parchment on the purity seal. I've already washed the top of the purity seal with that black glaze that I was going around with earlier. And you can see that's already dulled it right back down. It doesn't look like a, you know, a bright out of place orange now. But the parchment itself needs a little looking at. So, Seraphim sepia to start off with, then iron rack skin. We'll just build in some highlights with iron rack skin. Probably gonna add a little bit of white to that as well. That's looking sexy. And we'll do a little bit of scribble on it as well, just with some very, very thin black paint. Not quite a glaze, but very, very thin black paint on the very last end, end pair of the brush. Just scribble some lines across it. Do a few fat, a few fat, a few thin, and then end up with something that looks a bit like that. And after all of that, let's do a spinny reveal with a nice bit of basing. There we go. Look at that guy. So obviously I didn't give you too much detail there on the face, that's because I have a separate video for painting faces that shows my technique. Uh, same with the lever, I skipped through a bit of that because I've shown the lever in previous videos. And I do want to encourage you to kind of go through and get a bit more of a broad idea of my painting method. So uh, do check out some of the other videos if there's anything that you, uh, that you want a bit more of an insight into. But man, this was a trip down memory lane, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you so much White Scars for existing. There you go, folks. White Scar's my way. I really, really enjoyed painting that. It was a beautiful bit of nostalgia to me, thinking back to all those old little RTB-01 first edition Rogue Trader Space Marines. And I had a really good time with it, especially getting onto those bits of freehand and battle damage, because, you know, that's really my cup of tea anyway. I do hope you'll try those kind of things, because they are really, really good fun. And they can take something that's, you know, otherwise a pretty simple paint job and, and just make it look a bit more cool and a bit more interesting. It's the kind of thing that when you see a model painted like that, you'll want to pick it up and take a look at it, investigate that battle damage and stuff. I think that kind of thing's really cool. So, folks, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me get seen. I will be back very, very soon with some quick tips for you. I know it's been a little while since we've done one of those. I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Thanks a lot.